YouTube is still in the process of rolling out its anti-adblock tech, leading to a record numbers of both installs and uninstalls of these plugins, as users shop around looking for a solution that actually works and works on a consistent basis. And whilst it's hard to put together like actual real world numbers here, it does seem like there is a general downward trend in the usage of ad block or content blockers, whichever term you want to be using. And this makes sense. As you put more hoops in front of users, there are going to be more and more users who don't want to jump through the hoop. Keep in mind, most users are not really that technical. Most users want to install a plugin that calls itself an ad blocker and then the extension just works. They don't know what a filter list is or how to update one. If the plugin doesn't work out of the box, that means the plugin is probably broken. At the same time as this, there's a handful of EU privacy advocates arguing that adblock detection tech violates EU law. Now, a lot of the police reporting on this are reporting on it as if it's literally about to happen. There's going to be a crackdown. There's going to be a lawsuit. But in reality, it's not exactly that simple. The main person involved has been campaigning against this for the past seven years. And whilst they're getting quite a bit of attention now, there hasn't been an official statement made by the EU. But considering their track record, I would not be surprised if something positive in favour of the user ends up happening. But hey, who owns YouTube? That would be Google. And what does Google also work on? Chromium. So what if there was a way to not outright block the ad blockers, but neuter them to the point of being basically worthless? And when they're worthless, then the users choose to stop using them of their own volition. So whilst you are still to blame, you're not going to get the blame for it, the plugin developers will. Guess what is back on the table? Manifest V3, better known as just MV3. This is not the first time we've talked about a migration to MV3. I believe if all things went well for Google, by now everything would be done. As you can probably tell though, things didn't entirely go well. So initially, it was quite buggy, it had some stability issues, it was breaking functionality that Google didn't exactly intend to break. They were going really, really fast with the migration, a little bit too fast, and it just was not ready for plugin developers. As such, and also from developers just not updating their extension, of the 1200 extensions this user checked, 872 were still on Manifest V2. 328 were on Manifest V3. They'd be breaking two thirds of the extensions. Along with this, a bunch of Google's own extensions had not been migrated yet. They were pushing for the migration and hadn't even finished the first party work. As such, for pretty obvious reasons, the migration was paused. But just a few months after that, Oliver Dunk said this, We plan to continue reviewing feedback, making changes, and improving documentation to ensure the transition from Manifest V2 to Manifest V3 is smooth and successful. We're still working on the timeline of the MV2 phase-out plan, so keep an eye out in the coming months. We will provide sufficient migration time for developers, at least six months of heads up, before beginning any experiments to turn off MV2 in the browser next year. We also want to ensure that we phase out MV2 in a timely manner, and we're continuing to listen to feedback from the developer community to help inform our improvements and timelines. Thanks for your patience while we continue to work on moving the extensions ecosystem forward in a way that supports the needs of users and developers. And that time is coming up very, very soon, resuming the transition to Manifest V3. Here is the phase out timeline. We will begin disabling Manifest V2 extensions in pre stable versions of Chrome, Dev, Canary, and Beta as early as June 2024, in Chrome 127 and later. Users impacted by the rollout will see Manifest V2 extensions automatically disabled in their browser and will no longer be able to install Manifest V2 extensions from the Chrome Web Store. 
Also in June 2024, Manifest V2 extensions will lose their featured badge in the Chrome Web Store if they currently have one. TLDR, after June 2024, you will not be able to use an MV2 extension inside of Chrome and by extension inside of Chromium. With the exception, okay, of enterprises using the extension Manifest V2 availability policy to ensure the continued functioning of Manifest V2 extensions in their organization will have one additional year until June 2025 to migrate the Manifest V2 extensions in their organization. Browsers with the policy enabled will not be impacted by the rollout of the deprecation until that time. The intended function for this is if you're a company using internal extensions, you will have more time to migrate them and you'll have more time to fix up your workflow to, you know, make sense with MV3. But anybody out there could just go and enable the policy and have one extra year with the extensions are actually working on their browser. Zero is default browser behavior, which after June 2024 is going to be disabled. One is disabled, two is enabled, and then three is enabled for forced extensions only. A forced Chrome extension is one installed by your enterprise policy rather than one installed by the user. Now, the biggest and continued concern with MV3 is the damage it'll do to content blockers. And this is exactly the reason you saw articles like this a couple of weeks ago. As YouTube declares war on ad blockers, Google sponsors ad blocking conference. So Google partially funded and held a talk, which you can see a full recording of here, at the Ad Filtering Dev Summit. When they did this, they were getting praised because, oh my god, Google cares about ad blocking. They want to make sure ad blocking is still good into the future. So they can just keep making things worse and idiots will praise them for it. I'm telling you, this is an absolute giga brain marketing strategy and whoever came up with it, I want to speak to them because they clearly know what they're doing here. And it's the same reason why Google poisons the well when it comes to ad blockers. So you may have seen this article, Google attempts to undermine ad blockers. Now, these guys are trying to like ship their own ad blocker. So do take what they're saying with a grain of salt. Make sure you research the points they should bring up. But this brings up a really important point about two of the biggest ad blocking systems. Whilst uBlock Origin is absolutely massive and a lot of people do use it, especially people who actually understand what open source and free software is, a lot of regular people make use of ad blockers called AdBlock and AdBlock Plus, which nowadays are owned by the same company. And these make use of a policy called acceptable ads, which the acceptable part means that they accepted money to allow the ads to be whitelisted, so now you get to see them. That's basically the policy. Their logic is they're ads that aren't intrusive or annoying, but if you're running an ad blocker, your intention is to block the ads. So it doesn't matter if they're acceptable, and that's why, you know, uBlock Origin got a lot of attention, because it doesn't do that. It doesn't do it at all. Now, as for AdGuard, they do not participate in a program like this, but the CTO does not have a completely negative opinion about MV3. With Manifest V3, we've observed the immense effort that browser teams, Chrome in particular, but also other browsers, are putting into working on a unified platform, and I see how they're listening to the feedback from extension developers. As always, migrating to a new platform is a large undertaking, but we're hopeful that the new unified platform will bring substantial benefits to the entire browser extensions ecosystem, and that ad blockers like us will be able to continue being up to the task and further improve. Now, this is the opinion of AdGuard, but not every content blocker agrees with this take. Here is a developer from uBlock Origin, replying to someone who said, I was reading an article about how the uBlock Origin team promised possibly wrong use of wording on my part, it's all from memory, how they would be able to provide near full ad blocking even on Manifest V3. The uBlock Origin team never promised that. 
uBlock Origin Lite was created as a simple slash non-technical install and forget content blocker that is optimized for Manifest V3 and doesn't require broad read slash modified data permissions at install time. However, uBlock Origin Lite is very limited compared to uBlock Origin due to the restrictions imposed by MV3. Filterless update only when extensions update, thus no fetching of up-to-date lists from servers. So if there is a change to a website, for example, you will need to wait for an actual extension update for that problem to actually be fixed. There is no dynamic loading there. Many filters are dropped at conversion time due to MV3's limited filter syntax. No importing of third-party filter lists. No crafting of your own filters, thus no element picker. No strict blocked pages. No per site switches. No dynamic filtering. uBlock Origin Lite is not designed or intended to be a replacement for uBlock Origin. But this is just one uBlock Origin developer. Let's look at another one. This is Gorehill, the main guy behind the project and the original author. I've seen mentions that uBlock Origin Lite is proof that MV3 based blockers are as capable as MV2 ones. I can't speak for other blockers, but this is not the case for uBlock Origin Lite versus uBlock Origin. By saying I can't speak for other blockers, it sounds like you're blaming yourself for this. Don't do that. Google is to blame for MV3 blockers being so much work. Not blaming myself, I just haven't looked into the feature set of other blockers to know if and how much they will be affected. Other content blockers don't have dynamic filtering, a major feature in uBlock Origin, which can't be ported to MV3. So maybe they are just fine with MV3. Whilst it is entirely possible that Gorehill and the other developers are just completely missing something and it actually is possible to do, as it currently stands, there is a lot of issues that they cannot work out how to deal with in a way that is going to give you a content blocker that is as powerful as what is currently available with uBlock Origin. But not all hope is lost. If you want a content blocker that still works going into the MV3 world, there are a couple of options. Obviously, you could set up a pie hole if, you know, you're bored and want to go the very technical route. The better option is is using one of the browsers that has a built-in ad blocker. Things like Vivaldi, which literally built their ad blocker as a response to MV3. Brave, which is committed to supporting their ad blocker once MV3 is just, you know, out into the world. And Firefox, which at least at this stage is kind of testing the waters with both, having MV2 support and MV3, and then allowing developers to choose what they actually want to use. Maybe with the exception of Opera GX, most other browsers simply haven't even acknowledged or commented on the migration to MV3, and don't have any ad blocking plans in place. But there are options, so go and use them if you feel like using them. Anyway, I don't know if this is actually going to happen this time. Maybe they're going to find another reason to delay the migration and it happens another year later. Honestly, at this point, it really wouldn't surprise me. Google kind of has a track record for trying to build something and then just ditching it out of nowhere. There's an entire site for it. I recommend you check it out. But until then, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What browser do you run? Is it Brave? Is it Chromium? Maybe you're an Edge user. I would love to know. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Silly Bear Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and are you brave enough? Yeah.